Hey everyone! <laughs> it's Teddy Bear and Rita. <laughs> Makes it seem like this is his show. Um, how are you? We're here. Yay! Getting ready for um, date night to start date night. And um, we're doing a really fun project tonight i'm one that i'm so excited about it's throw pillows made um made by hand for you know by you and then we're going to embellish them now this is a sewing project but it's a low sew project it's really not a whole lot of work but um, it is fun, and the ideas and the possibilities are kind of endless on this, um, as I, I have mentioned uh, over the course of the week. So I got this idea because I went to uh, Home Goods with my sister the other day, and I was looking at all the throw pillows, and I was like, you know... I can make that and I can make it for a lot less than even at home goods. You know, like home goods is, you know, reasonably priced stuff. And when you look at the retail price, um, you're like, what? Who's going to pay 50 bucks, right? For, for a pillow. Um, but yeah. And so Don, hi, Don. Hi, Emmy. So I'm going to, um, say my hellos and then I'm going to jump right in. So, um, welcome to date night. Um, I hope that, I hope that we got some new folks on. And if you are new, make sure that you introduce yourself because this is a fabulous group, a lot of really nice people. And, um, yay, Dave, nice to see you. Yay. So, um, so everybody, please welcome Dave and other other new people that are um, that are uh, new and identify themselves. Can't forget Benji. Nope. Yeah, throw pillows are so expensive, and he did. Oh, you got a sewing machine. Awesome. I'm using my old Elna sewing machine. I've had it for oh twenty years or something like that. Mm. And uh, and. It works just fine. I made tons of masks on it uh, just a few months ago. It seems like it was just a few months ago. And um, then uh, we were doing this project on, um, we were doing this project on, hey, Becky, you want to be in my video, it said? Do I, do I invite you in on my video? Is that how that works? I don't know. I don't think I know how that works, Becky. Um, so anyway, we were doing that date night where we did like the, it was like a deer with the, with the snowflakes. And so I bought this fabric and I bought a half yard of it and I only used, uh, well, no, wait, I might've bought a yard of it, but I only used half of what I bought. And so I had a few pieces left over and I started thinking, huh, what could I do with that? And I put two and two together and said, well, why don't we make these um, pillows and these are special because they are n no zipper and it has this is called an envelope pillowcase now you could make them tighter I like mine sort of loose so I can give it the old jackknife thing <laughs> when I when I put it on my sofa or wherever but um but I, I don't, I make mine a little bit loose and I'm going to give you the instructions, but it's so easy. And, um, this, what I think, um, what I've figured out is that to start with, it may cost you about $10 to make one of these, but then going forward, um, you can then take off this cover and reuse the form for the spring or the summer or the fall. And um, and then it would just cost you for the fabric. So just to kind of give you a rundown, I did a rundown on this. I bought my pillow forms from Amazon and I will post a link. Um, they come like this. <laughs> they come like, they're, they're like flat as pancakes. Um, and they, 
they sell them two for about 13 or 14 dollars so let's say seven for each okay um so seven dollars for the pillow form i got this fabric this not this particular fabric, but the fabric I'm going to show you tonight, um, I got for $3 a yard and I only bought a half a yard. So that's a dollar fifty. So, so far we're up to eight fifty. And then I have, I have this iron on. I don't know if you all have iron on, but, um, I'm going to say it was just 10 inches of iron on. So that's only a couple of bucks right there. So that's a pillow that is under $10. And then when the season's over, you're simply going to flip it over and pull out your pillow from the form like this. And then you'll cover it, I don't know, with a Happy New Year one or, or a um, Valentine's Day one or an Easter one. And you could have this sort of interchangeable thing. And look, I mean, this pillow. Now, you could also, if you go around your house and look for throw pillows, and then it would cost you less. Um, and I've done that too before. But um, this was super simple to make as well. Um, and so it's inexpensive, super simple to make, and it does include crafting with the Cricut. So it's a perfect date night opportunity. So, um, so I'm going to just kind of jump in and say hello to everyone. Um, I did, and I'm going to just sort of jump in and start talking about this. I'm going to move my camera ever so slightly up a little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. So, um, the when you're working with fabric if you've not worked with fabric all together too much um it really this these pillows can be any size but i uh, decided to make them square and i had two different size pillows i had 18 by 18 and a 16 by 16 and for this demonstration i'm just going to keep those measurements in mind because um you can it can be as small as 12 or 10 and and even bigger than 18 by 18 for the european you can do this for shams you can do this for your for your bed as well um you just have to follow these sort of rough guidelines and then you know you can do whatever you'd like um and yes I, if you don't sew, you can use fabric glue, although I've never done it before. There's several people who have said that, yes, you can use um, fabric glue or, yes, uh, stitch witchery is another thing. Well, that's what we used to call it. I don't know. Um, stitch witchery. My date nut beverage, and I want to just show you, look at this corgi cup I got at Kohl's. And I have my beautiful honey chamomile tea in there. So that's what I'm having tonight. What are you guys having? Mm. Tequila. <laughs> no tequila in my tea tonight. But I was thinking about having a little bit of spiked eggnog. I think I'll do that next week. Anyway, so so I this is a, a square thing, but know that you can um you can make it smaller, bigger, you know, depends on your form. So you kind of have to know what size form you're working with. And this one, as I mentioned, is an 18 by 18. Um, and I'm going to uh, show you, I think, my a couple of my, um, I did 16 by 16, 18 by 18. So let me just show you what we started with. So again, I went to the fabric store yesterday and I picked up half a yard of a few different fabrics. One um, of that buffalo check everybody loves. So I got the buffalo check. I also got um, this one here. It's a doggy one, like a dog paw, right? And um, it, it, this was $2.99 a yard. Uh, it's called Snuggle Flannel. And um, it's two ninety nine a yard, and so I got a half a yard because I figured I was making sixteen or eighteen inch pillows. So let me show you what we start with. So um, I just did a quick cutout, like of a measure, and basically what I need to do, what I needed to do was, and this is I want to just double check because I did it just earlier. 
This is, hold on. This is the 16 inch pillow. So when you're cutting this out, you're going to um, cut out something that is 16 and a little bit more. So let's say 17 inches just, and this is for a 16 by 16 inch, inch pillow. So 17 inches wide, um, and that gives us a half an inch on either side, okay? And then we need to make it seven, 16, plus 16, right? I'm just doing it right over here. 16 plus 16, plus then another mm, inch or two, um, which, so it turns out to be about 35 inches for me, um, for this 16 inch pillow. So it's a rough thing, but basically it's a rectangle. See that? It's a rectangle that I've cut out 16, really 17 inches, uh, wide and a 34, 35 inches um, long. Now, the reason why I'm kind of hesitating is be because um, you've got to uh, just basically think in terms of how big your pillow is. So for a 16 inch pillow, you have to have it wrap around the pillow you know, the front and the back of the pillow, and you have to have some room for the seams. Um, and so, you know, you have to kind of gauge it with your head and your eyeball. So this is going to fit nicely in that 16 inch pillow. Now, what I did was after I cut out this rectangle, um, I pressed over my edge you see this? And I created, basically I created a seam and, and just sewed this part. I'm not gonna show you this part, but um, just so that you know, this is what I did. And I did this on both sides of the long side, you see? Um, that's fine, Daryl. Um, so this is just so that I have a nice finished edge. And all I did was I pressed it over. You see this here? Just want to kind of open it up so you can see. I pressed it over and pressed it over again. And, um, and then I just did a seam across the edge. And I did that here as well on the other side, okay? So now I have um, this piece of fabric. So what I'm going to do is I am going to, I'm going to move my, my thing a little bit, is I'm going to lay it with the, with the good side facing me, and I am going to fold in. First, I'm going to go to half. See that? This is half. I'm just going to keep my finger at the halfway point. And then I'm going to take the left side, right? And I'm going to fold it in to about where my fingers were, all right? And then the right side, and it's going to overlap. So there you go. So you have this long rectangular piece and we're just doing um, it so that it's folded over. This is gonna be the front. These are gonna be, this is gonna be the back and it's okay and you do want it to, to overlap here, okay? And now what you can do is while, you, while you're doing that, you can kind of measure. Now I want this to measure 16 inches and I can't really show you my, where's my little thing here? So here is 10 to 26, so that's perfect. I made a perfect square. Um, it's not, you won't see it as kind of a square because I haven't done the edges yet, but this is, it. Um, it's like, almost a perfect square. It's 16 inches going this way and then going this way, it's 17 inches, but that's so that I can have those two sides. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on my sewing machine and I am going to close up. Now this is just, just like this, okay? And I'm gonna put a seam straight through here and it's gonna go over this and over this on both sides, so simple. So, so far you just had to do 
do the edge. Now, this, these are the two things you have to do with the sewing machine. So I get the sewing machine and it's on just a regular stitch. And let me make sure I got my pedal. I don't usually have my sewing machine out here. But, um, so then we're gonna just take the sewing machine. It's gonna be just straight sewing. And we are going to do it about a half an inch here. And let's lower that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go maybe like four or five stitches. Then I'm gonna hit my back button here because I want for that seam to be really good. And what that does is just goes back to the start. All right, and then I'm just gonna keep working so that I stay as straight to the half an inch as possible. Now I'm gonna feel a bump here. Whoops, I'm gonna feel a little bump here and that's okay. All right, and you can go slow. Do not have to go fast. And then when you get to the end, all right, you're just going to make sure you hit the back button again, because you want to have a really nice, strong end there. See, that's what I did. It really is easy. It is easy. It really is not difficult. I, I don't generally do sewing um, instruction, so I'm probably kind of messing up on that a little bit. But now I'm just turning over my piece. I did this side. Now I'm going to do this side. And we're just making a square. So think of it as a square with two sides, the front and back of the side. A pillow is probably the easiest thing you can do to, um, if you're, you know, just getting started or you haven't sewn in a really long time, a pillow is a super easy thing to start with. And almost done. There we go. So now I have my pillow. It's all made. This is so easy. Now, what I would suggest, one of the little things, this is one of those things that my mom taught me, is in addition to um, cutting off all of those little loose strings, even though they're going to be on the inside, um, she always told me to keep your work clean. Um, I'm also going to take my scissors on the corners and wait let me just grab this one and i am going to be careful but i'm going to just snip here and that's going to allow that corner to open up and i won't get a lot of like of a, a scrunching of the fabric there okay so i'm going to do that in all four pieces all four sides and believe it or not that's it you're done did I tell you that was easy? So look, then you just simply turn it inside out. You do one side and then you do the other side. And you have to, you know, obviously you have to put your fingers in there, but um, there you go. That is my pillow. Um, pillow cover now this is what i mean about it being an envelope cover so this is see there is the um overlap that we did there's no um there's no zipper no anything you just simply take your pillow form which I'm, i think this is the 18 inch one so this is going to be a treat because um it's the bigger one so it's probably going to go on pretty tight and this you, you can experiment with your pillow forms a little bit. So let's see. I might have to get the 16-inch one, but okay, here we go. 
<laughs> Get in there. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it looks like a kid with two s small pajamas on. So <laughs> I think I'll go back and use my 16 inch one. But that is it, folks. I'm going to show you how to do it again. So don't worry. I'm going to repeat it so you can see how to do it. But basically, it's just two things, one on either side. Okay. Um, so let me get my other ones that I've already done some of the work to. Here we go. So here is my cut. And remember, I just did the ends. All I did was fold it and fold it again on itself. And then I took the sew, I took the sewing machine and I just made a seam there. You don't really have to do this part, but it makes, um, it makes it look more finished. And, uh, if you know people that sew, they will check your seams. <laughs> um, and then here, what I did was I already did the folding part, which was, remember you put it face up, and then you take and fold it over like this. And so that there is an overlap. And now we're going to get the sewing machine again. And we are going to whip through these. Actually, I have two or three more that I can just sew right through on. So let's get going on that. Pillows are the kind of thing like, I don't know, I, I'm going to be dating myself, but I took home economics and that, and we did things like pillows. And so I thought it was an easy thing at the time. And then we made a skirt, but, um, I thought it was an easy thing at a time, but to be honest, uh, some of, I do most of my sewing and it's mostly like home stuff. Although I've been known to make a costume or two. Um, and then this here, I have some pins in there so I can just take those pins right out. Do the other side. Are you all with me? You think, um, you think this is. This is uh, fairly easy. And again, if you have um, ideas for how to do it if you don't sew, I think that that's great to try things like stitch witchery um, or if they still call it that. Like heat and bond, I think, is it's like a fusible fabric um, for edging. Babs, is it called stitch witchery anymore? Or is it? I don't know if it is or not. Okay, so that's it. And take out the pins. Get your scissors. Take off these little strings here. And we're gonna clip those edges. Whoop, there's another pin. And almost done. Now for the cricket part. <laughs> so here we go. We have our pillowcase all done. Don't sew over my pins. Oh yeah, I always sew over my pins. I know. Thank you. It's a good good advice <laughs> that I never follow. But yes, it's good advice. Okay, so there, I'm turning it inside out. Yeah, I know it. I know that, Diana. Um, I, 
sometimes I use the pins and sometimes I don't, but I wanted to show you with the pins. And if you do with the pins, you can take them out as you are sewing, so it won't cause a problem. Um, okay, so there it is. There's my uh, check, what do you call this? Buffalo check, and let me grab a 16 inch, uh, let's see, is this one a 16 inch one? I think it is a 16 inch one. So again, these are available. You can get them at like the fabric store at Joann's or Hobby Lobby, I guess. But um, I just bought them off of Amazon. They come really flat. And yep, this is the 16 by 16. And you can fluff them up a little bit if you want to. Um, and then you're just gonna take it and put it in one end. Make sure you get that corner up in there, just like that. Now you could choose to leave these just like this, or you could embellish them. And you know me, I like to embellish. So we're going to um, use our easy press. Come on, there you go. Boop, 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 what do you think? Um, because it's really just, I think it's such an easy little craft. You'll feel very accomplished. Now let, let's go on to the, um, to the iron on portion, the Cricut part portion. By the way, this is the 18 inch. This is the 16 inch and we're going to take it out of the, um, out of the pillow because we're going to decorate it. So we can do this. Just like this. I'm gonna put the pillow behind me here. Okay, so I found a number of really fun, they're called Christmas, um, let's see, let me find my Cricut Design Space. Okay, come on. Um, so under images, if we go to image sets and we type in pillow, you'll find a number of image sets, okay? Um, and this one here is brand new Christmas throw pillows. So I just pulled up a few of the ones here. Like there's this one that I really like, Cozy Winter Vibes, Merry and Bright, and Tis the Season, and I did the Joy one. And I think I did the Joy, Hope, and Peace one that I cut out. Now, I did them uh, about the size they came in at, which was about 10 inches, 9 or 10, 10 inches. Um, and so there, you know, there is, uh, you know, room for growth, you know, big, small, whatever. There's also a number of them that have drawing. And you know what that would be good for? Infusible ink, um, infusible ink pens. So this might be uh, an image set that we come back to when we do the infusible ink pillow covers, okay? So um, because we could use the infusible ink pens, and yes, this is in, um, did my iPad update? I don't think it did, not today although I might not have been paying too, too much attention. But again, this is called Christmas throw pillows. There's also everyday throw pillows, pillow sayings. There's um, Alexis Maddox has a bunch of holiday pillow designs. So there's quite a few to choose from. You don't have to just choose that though. I found um, like a Merry and Bright that I want to show you how to do. So once you pick out and you cut out your design, and remember, when you're cutting out iron-on, you're going to lay the iron-on, the shiny side down towards that mat, right? And you are going to always, always, always mirror your image, okay? And I'm gonna just show you really quickly. This is on my mat. Some people, uh, they, they take it off, that's what I usually do, but you can also um, weed on your mat. You start with the weeding tool and you start pulling on the edge. And I could have cleaned up this uh, and you saved some of this 
this iron on, but I was in a hurry with this particular one. But here we go. We just start taking off, and it's really, it's, it's a lot different than weeding vinyl, okay? Um, this is the iron-on. First of all, it's mirrored, but it's kind of like got a real, like, stretchy feel to it. See that? Um, and then it just sort of rolls up like this. So we take off the bulk of it by hand after we get it started with the weeding tool. And then we start to weed, um, and you do need good lighting for this, which um, I like to generally like to use daylight, but I'm using this stronger light tonight. And then we're just gonna go in and we're gonna look at where it's cut, you see? And we're just taking out these pieces of the design and keep going like this. I, I honestly think iron-on is so much easier than uh, vinyl is to weed because this part here that's left is sort of still sticky. Yeah, this is called, I call it iron-on only because um, a lot of people will call this HTV. HTV stands for heat, transfer vinyl because it's vinyl right and you're going to use heat to apply it or transfer it on okay um i call it iron on because uh, cricket calls it iron on um and it's just easier for me to remember that than to say htv especially teaching people who don't know what htv is and they don't want me to get all you know um, oh, I'm using too many abbreviations kind of thing. But HTV is iron-on. Iron-on is HTV. It's the same, one in the same. It's just, uh, it's just a term, okay? And this stuff here that I'm using is just regular old uh, Cricut Everyday, Everyday Iron-on. Oops, got a little lip there okay um so it's not anything fancy although this same this is the same procedure you would use if you were going to do glitter iron on or you were going to do um holographic uh holographic sparkle patterned um, we've done all of those different things over the year, but, um, you know, it's always good to have a nice reminder of how this works. So that's why we're doing this today. And I'm almost done, I think. Getting close, right? So I have to do the O here. And this last part of the snowflake. Okay. And I'm just putting in, this is a weeding tool, and I'm just using it to sort of pull up those pieces that are cut out, cut outs, okay? This could not be simpler. If there, uh, you know, if there was someone that was just, they were wondering, should I get an easy press? Should I get into, um, into doing iron on? It really isn't that difficult. It really isn't. There's just a few things you have to remember. And that is that you have to mirror your image. And when you mirror, there's a little toggle switch that allows you to turn the image around. And let me tell you, let me show you why. So now I'm taking this off of my, um, mat And now that I have it off the mat, there is my design. And the reason why I mirrored it is because I cut on this side. This is the side that has the, the vinyl, the stuff that you're going to actually apply. This is just a carrier sheet. It's like a protective transfer sheet. And that's why we do um, the mirroring. So now when you look at it this way, you're looking at it and going, oh, okay, now I get understand why it's mirroring. So let's go ahead and get the heat press going um, so I can show you how to put, how to put the, uh, the iron on onto the, onto the, 
pillow form. Now, oh, I gotta get this other one out too. I have a couple other designs. I'm gonna show you what they are. So let's take them out, this guy. If I have a little more time, I'll show you the, uh, the, the pause one. Because I come up with this, look at this. Dog spot, oh my God, right? So while I'm heating this up, my easy press, and I'm going to show you how to know what, where to heat it up and like how long you're going to be doing this for. Um, but I did cut out these, tis the season. I cut out this, merry and bright, and this is a, is a gold. It's not the metallic everyday iron on, this is metallic. This is gold foil, okay? And then here's one in just plain red. And we can do the cozy winter vibes. I thought I had another one around here that was white, but it's okay. All right. So I'm heating up my easy press. Let me show you how you know or how, how what temperature and all of that right? So we're going to go to Google and I am using my iPad, but you can do this on your, on your phone. You can do this on your laptop or whatever. And I'm choosing, when I go to Google, I just type in Cricut heat guide, heat guide. And it comes right up here. See Cricut access, blah, 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 heat guide. When you go there, this is the guide that you're going to use with anything for infusible ink, iron on, whether you're using foil, glitter, or anything like that. Um, you, here is where you're going to get all the information you need to successfully transfer um, iron on or heat transfer HTV onto a onto something, okay? So here I choose one of the three Easy Presses. So in this case, I have my Easy Press 2 on, so I choose that, but I can also use my Mini or my Original Easy Press, okay? Then I choose the material that I cut out. So I did an everyday iron-on, I did it in metallic, and then I choose my base material. Well, my fabric is 100% cotton, so I just choose cotton. Um, I also choose my Easy Press mat, which I'll get out. And then here we go. This is exactly what I need to do. I need to preheat for five seconds, and then I have to have my machine set at 315, and I have to put it on for 30 seconds. I'm going to use light pressure, and then I'm also gonna flip and do it for 15 seconds on the other side, and then peel it off when it's cool. Okay, so, and there's all kinds of information here um, for you to know, um, in addition to, you know, those basics. So you might want to familiar, familiarize yourself with that, okay? So here's our Easy Pre Press Mat, my Easy Press Mat, I should say. Cannot wait until I'm into a bigger studio. Really, uh, run out of room here all the time. Okay, so here's my pillow case, pillow cover, right? And you know, you could. I like to keep it nice and straight here. So you could, if you wanted to, you could um, use your easy press as a little bit of an iron. I'm gonna move my T. Mm. Okay, um, to sort of uh, get it sort of nice and flat, if you wanted to do that. I think that counts as preheating, but I will also do the preheating. All right, so on the opposite side of where the opening is, is where we're going to put this. And I have a piece of thread. Okay, so I think halfway is about here, so I think that that's where I'm going to put it and sort of lining it up like this, okay? All right, so I'm going to take it off 
and do my little preheat, five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. And you notice it's on 315. I'm going to take my iron on. I'm going to try to put it back exactly the way that I had it. I'm actually lining up these two circles. I think that would work. Let me just have a look. Yeah, I think that mm, maybe over a little tiny bit. And really, it's a pillow. Who's going to? It's not like it's a shirt. Okay, ready? I'm going to take my easy press. I'm going to do it for 30 seconds. Now, my design is slightly bigger um, than than my easy press. This is the nine by nine inch size easy press. So what I want to make sure of is that I'm getting the heat on all of the design. Um, and that is something that sometimes a lot of people that when they're new, they don't realize it, especially infusible ink. You have to have that heat concentrated right and we um <clears throat> we saw that the other day when we did the hanukkah wine or beverage bags so i move it if i have a small i do also have the larger easy press but i find it a little bit difficult to grab onto so i simply will go and make sure that i get the entire piece um covered with that 30 seconds and that might mean you have to move it around but i tend to just like put it on this side and then move it over to this side and do another 30 seconds you know a few extra seconds is not going to really really hurt anything it is the actual temperature that um that matters most of all okay so we're going to flip it over and we're going to do the back side just for 15 seconds. Now, if someone asked, you know, the preheating and the um, and and the back side of it, it just helps the mm -hmm. adhesive um, stick better. Okay, onto your piece. So we have to let this cool off a little bit. Actually, while we do that. Actually, while we do that, let us do a couple of, first I wanna make a couple of announcements. Um, I have two people that on my um, YouTube that have been very good at making comments and, um, and, and just sort of showing and sharing a lot of people. And they are um, Alaja Curry, and um, I'm not sure if she's on here or not, but Loretta Saunders. I don't know if she's on here. She might have to watch the replay. So those two people um, will get a prize from from Cricut, a $50 prize, okay? And then, um, so that that's that's today's, you know, giveaway, but there's going to be another giveaway in just a little bit. Okay. So Aledra, um, and Loretta, I don't know if Loretta's on tonight. She usually watches the replay. Okay. So those two people won, and I have one more to give away and I'm going to do that in a little bit. Okay. So now that it's cooled off, I just want to show you how this would then peel. So I try to peel on the, um, like, kind of like this. And I'm seeing that it's not, look it, right here. See, it's sort of pulling up. And that might be because of the fibers that were we talking about before with the edges. And so I'm gonna give it another little shot on those edges just because I don't wanna mess up my design. And that's okay, too, to just kind of go back and do a little bit on the edges. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention, because she brought it up mostly, but Dawn Walsh, who has been um, so fabulous with the... Um, the card exchange sort of nominated herself to be um, a 
an admin for that group and I would love it if she would accept that um, that offer because you're right I do have a little too much on my plate there I don't like that that is not coming I really need to put a little bit more sorry guys but you know you have to kind of roll with the punches a little bit and make sure that you're getting especially I have trouble sometimes with that edge the edges so a few extra seconds not going to hurt that So Dawn, are you gonna wanna be the admin for that group, the the card group? Because <laughs> because I know I can't do it and I would love it if you did. Um that would be great. All right, so let's uh let this cool off a little bit longer. Now what else do I have? Oh, let me talk about viewer mail. So if you're new and you don't know about our card exchange, we have this lovely card exchange um, where right now it's just, I'd say it's about 50, oops, sorry, 50 or 60 people um, and they are exchanging holiday cards right now but we have plans to go into the spring and do like springtime or or um valentine's day and all different kinds um of things like that and so i've started to receive some cards myself so i told everyone that i would show them what um what i came what i got so this one is from uh christine vait Right, and this is actually an insert card, and I love it because she used I think she actually penned in this silver, but she used a nice glitter here, and she used I think that's a blue glitter, so really creative. And she says, You know, heartfelt blessings to you, Owen, Benji, and Teddy. Right, isn't that great? Super, let's move right along. This one is from Daryl Thornton. This is a um one a card that we've done, but she did it in a variation um where she used the silver, isn't that beautiful? Silver and a couple of different colors of purple. Um, and she said that we're keeping her sane with using her cricket. Isn't that great? Beautiful. Thank you, Daryl. Next up is from Paula Soros. This I thought was really clever. Look, she has some embossing. She's got some uh, foil. And this looks like, I don't know if it's print and cut or if it's like a pre-cut die cut. And she's stamped on the inside. And she has the most beautiful handwriting, doesn't she, Paula? And then this one I got, this one is from, I'm trying to remember, Deborah Mackie, very, very prolific. And look at that um, poinsettia, isn't that beautiful? And then I'm not sure, I wanted to ask you, Deborah, is this debossed? Because it's really awesome if it is. They're pre-cut dies, okay. Um, so this is from Debbie Mackie. Um, and she sends her, uh, wishes for happy holiday. And I love this, this, um, glitter. Look at that glitter poinsettia. Oh, so, so stunning. This one is from Don Walsh. It is an embossing folder, huh? That's an embossing folder. We have to do embossing folders at some point. Now, Don sends this card that says she made without the Cricut because she probably, I've probably made or seen every card that's in design space. And so I think it's really clever. It's got these really pretty pieces of like um, pine bows with a nice pretty, and look at that. It's got a, it's got a 
cut like this and then she put this lining on the inside so she wrote here isn't that great and she followed my advice handmade with love by dawn walsh i love it love it now the uh, thank you all and um i hope you all too if you're a part of the exchange you're receiving things now i was really surprised when i got this package in the mail uh from canada from Teresa rivard and look at this isn't this amazing i'm assuming that she made it herself but it's a pink I'm going to say it's a toque because it has, look at this pom-pom, so nice and a beautiful cro crochet. Isn't that gorgeous? And I also got, I'm putting my hat on already. I also got all kinds of candy in here, which you know that, um, that Owen is going to eat. It says coffee crisp. I did try those. Those look really good. And Smarties. They're like M&Ms, uh, but from Canada. And I got a beautiful card from her as well. There's one that we've made in the past, and she did the stamping. Thank you for everything you've given me. Oh, she learned so much. Isn't that great? What a lovely gift. Oh, just so wonderful. I'm wearing the hat from now on, Teresa. I love it. It's very pretty. Let me just show you again. And look at this fuzzball of a, of a, no, I just have to make sure that Benji doesn't get at it or he'll be chewing that thing right off. Um, it fits perfectly. Thank you so much, Teresa. So, okay, now that we've uh, spent a little time on viewer mail. Let's go back and see if we can't get this thing to go. Yay, it is going. Um, all right, so let's just roll it because I like to do that rolling technique. I still have a little problem with that. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to reach over and get my mini and I'm going to turn on my mini. This is a great use of the mini um, for that little right there, that dot. So I'm going to I'm going to work on the other side. I was thinking too. Um, some another one of the product experts. Um, said she went to the Dollar Tree store and she got some uh, placemats and what else did she say? Pillow covers and I think it was like a table runner for a dollar. They were polyester, 100% polyester and she did infusible ink on them. Can you believe that? Infusible ink on a one dollar. <laughs> she did a great job. But um Oh, of course, right? This is always the way for me. Uh, I'm going to wait for my my uh, thing to heat up a little bit longer here. It might be this um, gold color. Maybe what I can do is I'll take the other one. Yeah, let's do that. So take this other one that we made here. Here we go. Let's give that a little bit of a preheat. Oh good, my mini just came on too. All right, so preheat it. Flip it over. Let's do this one here. is the season okay let's try this one all right these things are heavy You did wine bags from the dollar store, Dorothy? I was really impressed with what, with what she came up with. Her, I don't know if you know her name is Ashley um, Markham. Uh, she's, I think she goes by the Crafty Chica or the 
frugal, something like that. I, I wish I remembered. I'm sorry, Ashley. Um, but she, I was really impressed with the one dollar find at the at the Dollar Tree store. And if I go out this week, which I'm not looking forward to going out this week, but if I go out this week, I'm going to check out the Dollar Tree store. Although I'm sure it's picked clean. Um. All right, so let's do that. And while ugh, we're waiting for that to cool, let us go over using our little mini and doing these little edge pieces because darn it all, it really needs to give me a break here, folks. All right, let's do our um, next giveaway. And again, the giveaways this month are, because we have inventory, um, not a lot, a lot of things going in and out of stock because it's such a banner year at Cricut. Um, we decided this month was going to be a surprise giveaway, which at the end of the month, we are going to gauge it on um, what's in stock, but it's going to be worth $50. Um, and it's going to uh, be worth $50 and it's going to be cricket stuff. So it could be, uh, oh, I don't know, materials or tools or a combination of, of whatever. Um, and what I would like to do is find out again who's been coming and has not won. Um, who's been coming and has not won um, yet in in like months or if at all i think there was one person i'm going to try to um i'm going to try to uh remember hi paula you need paper oh but there's a lot of the glitter and the regular paper is out of stock at Cricut, which really bothers me. But I'm hoping it comes in. You know, it's just an unprecedented year with everybody. And um, so they, it's just everybody's crafting, which is wonderful. You have not won. Tamara never won. Jennifer. Okay. But love... Uh, comment i haven't won been here so lisa you're right lisa webster lisa webster you're right you have not um okay i'm gonna choose lisa webster even though you know we, we'll have more but i know that lisa has been has been um has been really on a regular basis been coming uh to the show and so let's choose her and congratulations lisa now um of the people that i named so lisa aledra and um loretta what you need to do is send me an email um at miss rita to the rescue at gmail dot com and um so send me an email at that address um and what you're going to do is send me your full name whatever name you use it like with the post office and then um your full postal address um and then at the end of the month so like right after it won't come for christmas i'm afraid but at the end of the month um, you'll get your prize, $50 worth of stuff, and hopefully I'll know what that is going to be before it's sent out, so you'll know to be expecting it, but um, that's what you have to do, and by the way, if anybody ever just wants to send me an email, like sometimes people just send me pictures, which I absolutely adore, and I've, I've been wanting to um, figure out a way to... Uh, show to show them on like viewer mail because emails viewer mail right um so here we go come on now please do it for me honey 
Oh, there we go. That's working. Maybe it's just that one dot. <laughs> Would you die? That would be so funny. Um, that one dot that just didn't want to give up the ghost there. Um, okay, here we go. It's coming off real nice. It's probably just that one dang dot. I think it is. Is it gonna is it gonna come off? <laughs> oh my oh it's coming! It's coming! Yay! Yeah, yeah. Alright, alright, alright. Woo! I did it! Yeah! Woohoo! Alright, where did my pillow form go? Look at that! Yay! Hey, even the dogs are happy. Um, let's see. Get my pillow form and flip it over so you can see how it looks. So exciting. Yes, teddy bear. Someone suggested that I do more um, projects for dogs. <laughs> so if you guys want to see things like uh, little little uh, bandanas or something like that. I'm happy to do stuff like that. I found a bunch of really great graphics and design space that um, would be perfect. Let's see, all right, Let's close it up. There we go. Ha, oh, what do you think? <laughs> oh, I know I do get, I get excited over the silliest little things, huh? All right, so there it is, my cozy winter vibes um, pillow cover that I'm going to put on my sofa. And um, and I'm going, oh, let's see if we get this other one to go. I did it. Woo. All right. Oh, this one's working too. Yeah. Oh, life is good. All right, it's happening, it's happening. Okay, so now, uh, coming up on Monday, if you are a regular watcher during the week, coming up on Monday, we are doing our mystery material. I'm going to put hit that a little bit. And the mystery material is going to be printable vinyl for stickers because someone asked me about stickers and um, I had this sort of debate going on with someone about the sticker paper that Cricut has and um, and then I I sort of fell in love with with the printable vinyl so I thought that would be a good um, thing to do for Monday. Then what else do we have? We're going to be working on a couple of village type things. Um, and what else? What else? Try, oh, it's eluding me. Oh, we're going to do a lot of things like uh, home decor stuff, like um, little things for place settings and towels, tea towels. I've got a bunch of those that I bought from Kohl's that I want to show you how they look decorated. And I'm going to do infusible ink pillowcases as well so you can kind of see, um, see that. Oh, coasters. That's right. We're going to do coasters. Um, did you have a chance to do party foil. Oh, so, okay. I've been really thinking about party foil, like a lot, like more than is normal for, um, a, a human. Um, and I came up with a couple of new uses for it. So I'm going to show you those. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that will be this week. Um, because I, I, I was, it was kind of funny. I was on, uh, Pinterest looking for ideas too. And, and uh, it didn't come up with much. I was really surprised by that. I think party foil, we all have at least a roll or two hanging around there um, in our 
especially if you get the mystery boxes. Look at that. That tea does not want to. It's still warm, though. Hmm. Hmm. I might. <laughs> come on. Come on. All right. Well, I'm going to be proud of this one because I think that it did come out with all my persistence. Cozy winter vibes. All right. Pink and purple. Pink and purple. You know, I thought of some foil um, cones to make like foil trees with the party foil. And then I was thinking about um, using it as shred inside of uh, inside of ornaments. But then I started thinking, you know, why don't we just make party foil things that hang from the ceiling, like um, like snowflakes that hang from the ceiling out of party foil? Um, I think that that would be that would be a good idea. So, all right. So that's it for tonight. Um, we made these. Aren't they fun? I hope that I'm not that great at giving the directions for the sewing, but I wanted you to know that this is so simple. Um, it really is just a square of fabric that's doubled over and you just sew up either side of them and, um, and then stuff it with the pillow form. <laughs> um, <laughs> it really is. It's just simply, uh, you know, I think it's because it's in this really awesome mug. Babs, did you see this mug? This came from Kohl's. Um, so it's just nothing in the tea. It's just honey chamomile. But anyway, thank you, everybody. I love you guys. Thanks for coming tonight. And we're going to have fun all the way through to Christmas and we're just going to keep doing, doing, doing and keep our minds off of this and that and all that other stuff going on and just have a lot of fun. We'll see you on Monday. You might even see me tomorrow. Um, if we, if we, uh, if I have a few extra minutes in between cleaning and decorating, putting all the stuff on my tree. Okay, everyone. Um, we'll see you to possibly tomorrow and then on, and I will do the measurements. Yes. Yes. I'll base it on one particular size. Okay. Thanks everybody. Have a wonderful night. We'll see you again soon. Have a super rest of your weekend too. Take care.